Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Fancy Crafts. I was asked recently by someone whose name I don't know how to pronounce to make a video on how to draw textures for the purposes of horror illustrations. It'll be a short video, but hopefully it helps. Let's do it. On the left is an illustration by Stephen Gamble. On the right is one by Junji Ito. They're both firmly in the genre of horror, but they're done very differently. Let's talk about how they both accomplish horror in their own ways. The types of horror portrayed by the two artists are very different. Gamble is painting a broad scene with details left as blanks for you to fill in. Ito is presenting you with details that you can't escape. The scale of the scenes contributes to their choices. Gamble's is a foggy landscape from afar. You could be seeing this from behind a scraggly bush, having accidentally witnessed it while lost one moonlit night. You can't really say what's happening here. You might assume at first that these are impaled corpses, but looking closer, you can see that their limbs aren't hanging loosely down like a corpse's would, and their necks are holding up their heads. Are they hollow? Their balloon-like appendages being blown in the wind? Are these people still alive? Could they be floating above the ground, a migrating herd with an unknown destination? And where are these birds heading? Toward the people? If so, the scarecrow-like beings may not be what's horrifying after all. In Ito's illustration, you are looking over the shoulder of someone in a small, intimate space, observing a sick man. The man's forehead has continually replicated itself, forming a winding centipede with loose hair for legs. No detail is left out. You know exactly what's happening. You don't know why, but that hardly matters in this situation. It's certain that this is real, both to the man and the observer, and there's no escaping it. Both illustrations have a very slow tempo. They're not motionless, but they are languid. There's not much action, you're just left to observe the scenes. The textures used contribute to that. Gamble's image uses a dull, grainy texture across the whole image, and the values often bleed into each other. This contributes to the feeling of haze and adds a far-off, dreamlike quality to the scene. Ito's drawing uses sharp, crisp lines, but they're repetitive. The man's head is used as a pattern, its wrinkles forming the texture of the centipede. Most of the hatching used for value is near horizontal, horizontal lines being less active than vertical or diagonal lines. While the swirling centipede body leads your eye quickly, it isn't the focus. The focus is the man, framed by the mattress with a line of sight from the observer, and the state his transformation has left him in. The kinds of horror expressed here are supported by the artist's respective styles, texture being an important aspect. Gamble's horror here, as I see it, is that there are things outside of your knowledge, things that live in places where people shouldn't be, and that by some accident or punishment can intersect with your life. Children are right to be afraid of the dark. Ito's horror, again in my opinion, is that things outside of our understanding or control can and sometimes will impose themselves on what we love, and when they do, their obvious and plain presence is callously nightmarish. Your child lost their legs in a car accident. You contract a disease that is slowly eroding your facial features. What scares you reveals what you value. So if you're trying to think of something horrific, start with something you love. If you want to create believable textures for drawings, it's always best to reference reality. For horror, this can make you look like a psychopath, but it has to be done. Find pictures of things that scare you. These could be infected wounds, exposed organs, parasitic creatures, corpses, close-ups of spiders or predatory insects, shark's teeth, whatever gets you spooked. Gamble often uses plant motifs, which works well because of many plants' resemblance to veins. Regarding muscular and connective tissue, I can't show those things on YouTube, but there's a link in the description to a library of anatomical photography, including things like bisected limbs and organs, 
various connective fibers, and fatty deposits of the human body. Not for the squeamish, but it's the best resource I've found for organic scary textures. If you can't force yourself to look at those photos, you can use a lot of other things for texture references. Take photos of a raw steak for exposed muscle drawings. You could let it rot and take photos at intervals for zombie flesh. Even a piece of punctured paper could be scary in the right context. Imagine someone's skin is dry and thin enough to tear and crumple like paper. Or their eyes. Attribute textures to different objects and see what happens. When you feel uncomfortable, you're on the right track for horror. In case the person who requested this video was asking for something more direct, I'm including some very simple textures that you can learn to draw very easily. Hope it helps. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.